So basically, all you're gonna do. You turn it on. This switch. And then when you're ready to go, you swing the thing open. So I, I broadcast uh, White Hill Institute Tall Tine Tubers was the name of the blend. So step one is put the stuff in the thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, you should do it. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> step one, put the stuff in the thing. Okay. Get a little bit of... Wait, I got it. Oh, I got it, I got it. So you make your outer circle, and then you make your next circle, and you want your overlaps to be as minimal as possible. So then you should be able to see that urea on the ground. I feel like there's a, a geometry equation hidden in here with radiuses and stuff. Well, you'll figure it out. You're a smart kid. Yeah. <laughs> White's Bow Hunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate Tree Stands, B3 Releases and Broadheads, and Hoyt. Welcome to Hoyt's Bow Hunting Whitetails. Today we're going to be talking about our plan for the season and uh, how we're going to get into it, something about the bucks that we're going to hunt, maybe some targets, some goals, and uh, it's been a long summer working on the farm. And we've got a lot of food plots in, one that Jordan just fertilized is one of them, but hopefully we'll get some rain and then all this stuff will take off and we'll have some great spots to hunt this fall. I think the, the first thing we should talk about is maybe what class of bucks we're going to go after. You know, you you killed your first one last year. You killed a nice uh, year and a half old eight pointer. So you kind of have the green light here anyway for a while until you get some more experience. But I would like to see you try to shoot one that's at least a year older. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there should be a lot of nice, say three and maybe even four year old bucks because there were a good number of, of decent bucks on the farm last year that would be you know, really nice, solid four-year-olds. And then you know, maybe we'll shy off the three-year-olds if we can help it. Um, you know, targeting twos and four plus is better than targeting those really nice three-year-olds because mm -hmm. they're one year away from being really solid bucks mm -hmm. or you know, two years away from something that I would want to hunt. Uh, so that's, that's the goal. There were there was one old buck last year that I wanted to get. I got a bunch of trail camera pictures of him and we saw him during the late season down in the valley. And that spot should be primed for killing that buck. He's not a big antler deer, but he's old. He's got a big body, just a cool old buck. That valley this year is in corn. I talked about it last year, putting corn in there to make it easier to access it. Because mm -hmm. that's where the scrape tree is. Mm -hmm. You know, That's where I shot that buck. So with the corn, we should be able to sneak in and out of there pretty easy. Uh, so that, that should be a killer spot. Then uh, that buck is definite target for me. I don't know that there were any other four-year-old plus on the farm last year. There were some really nice three-year-olds. You know, and, and I'll show you a few pictures of those. Those could all be really good targets for you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know maybe something moved in. Some of the property that we're putting into hunting this year was in cattle last year. So I wouldn't be surprised if there were some deer that moved into those areas. Yeah, for sure. Because we didn't even run camera up there last year because the cows were in there until November. And uh, we hunted it late season a little bit. But other than that, um, we don't really have any idea what's on that part of the farm. I don't start running camera until uh, early in September. So we're about a month away, just a little bit less than a month away. And I like to wait until the bucks have moved out of their summer ranges and started to establish their fall ranges, filtering into their fall ranges. That way the pictures that I get of them is more of a reflection of where they're going to be that fall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we did film a little bit this summer. You know, we got a couple bucks that we filmed in velvet. 
so that was fun. Uh, most years, you know, I'll get really aggressive with the video camera the first week of August, but just so busy on the farm trying to keep up with all the projects. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the drought, so you had to spray everything twice, plant everything twice, you know, just like you never caught up. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get out and film nearly as much. We've got some alfalfa that, you know, definitely the, the bucks could have been on, uh, a few little bean areas that, you know, we should have been able to pick off a few, but we'll get them on the trail camera. Uh, so what, what are you thinking, like, for yourself? What, because you're going to have to hunt. I'm not going to be with you all the time. I'll be with you some in, in October, but once we get into prime time, it's going to be... November's kind of every man for himself. <laughs> yep. Good and even luck. late October. Yeah. Uh, so by then, you'll kind of have to have it well in hand as far as, you know, what you're going to do. Um, I'd kind of like to, you know, team you up with Ethan or one of the interns and just cut you loose and, and just see what you come up with. So we'll probably do some of that. Uh, just I'll go one way and you go the other way. And you'll go sleep in a in a culvert or in a buried water tank or at <laughs> the base of the tree, and we'll go into New Elvin and have a nice dinner, watch some Monday night football. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Well, what's your plan? Just see what the cameras yeah. hold. Yeah, I don't make a plan, and, and that's the fun I think of of my system. Is I don't have a plan until the deer tell me what to do. Right. They'll tell me, you know, just by where they show up on camera, which ones are daylight active. Mm -hmm. um, you so know, it kind of all hinges upon the cameras later, like mid September. Mm -hmm. Then you can start being like, okay, this guy seems to live around here. Yeah. And and you if you put a cam if you put the cameras out in the right places, and we can talk about that once we get into September, you get a real good feel for the range of these deer. So you know that this buck is living on these two ridges. Mm -hmm. and he doesn't seem to be going over here or over there. So where can I catch him? You know, where's my best ambush? You know, in those areas. Um, and you keep an eye on him and see if he turns daylight active. If he does, you hunt him immediately. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, you wait until the rut. Because they're all going to be daylight active during the rut to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. You know, some more than others. Uh, if you get a cold front coming through in late October, that can be really, really good too. So I'm more you know, I used to have a plan, you know, I'd go out and scout and I'd have all my stands up in advance. I'd have trails figured out and all that stuff. Well, um, that doesn't always work because the bucks don't, don't always follow that script. So if you're just hunting generically, just trying to kill a mm -hmm. buck, that works really good. Mm -hmm. So I'll try to pick out the biggest five-year-old on the property, five-year-old plus, as best I can tell. I don't know this farm really well enough to know the age of every single deer. But that's my goal. Um, I've also got to get shoot a bunch of does. Mm. So are you is that like a early season or a just kind of whenever they appear type of deal? I think you can target them a little bit more early season. Yeah, we can go after them more even if we don't have a target buck in mind. Mm -hmm. We can go after the does. Mm -hmm. So I mean, ideally, you'd kill all of your does before the rut. Okay. Yeah, we wouldn't be out there spooking stuff yeah. trying to recover does yeah. in you know November seventh. Um, so that's. That's the plan. Uh, we talked about trying to kill 15 does, and there's definitely 15 does here that we can take. Um, I mean, there's plenty of them. I mean, it's not an overabundance by any means, but if we're gonna you know, keep this place from getting overrun, mm -hmm. we gotta start you know, hitting the gas pedal a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, just keep checking back with us. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm excited to get some cameras out yeah. and see what filled in those vacuums that having the cows off because mm -hmm. one thing about this property that I don't know, it's a little easier to see it on uh, topo maps and aerial, but it's so hilly. Mm -hmm. So like the actual on paper acreage of it mm -hmm. is like not an actual reflection of how big it is right. and how much space there are like valleys and ridges and places where their deer could have lived and you never would have even seen them. Yeah. Well, that brings up a good point. The farm that we sold in southern Iowa, the biggest deer I ever killed there, lived on about 20 or 30 acres. Mm -hmm. You know, and he never ranged out of that area. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, we'll talk about that when the time comes to uh, to focus in on where to put cameras. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, we can, it's a cool farm from that standpoint. And what Jordan's getting at is that, you know, the acre is really the projection onto a horizontal plane. 
there's a lot more ground yeah. than it you would think. Yeah, so if you pounded it flat, you'd have a lot more acres. Yeah, to yeah, hunt. yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. So it's like the surface area versus the acre count. Yeah. So if it's flat, they're the same. Right. Surface area and acre count are the same, but when they're hilly like this, right. the surface area is going to be a lot higher. Yeah. Um, so that gives us a lot of places to hunt, uh, a lot of places to shoot Explore. does and have fun. And mm -hmm. yeah. So we're looking forward to it. Hopefully, hopefully uh, you can join us this fall and, and uh, week by week, we'll show you how this plan unfolds. Well, we appreciate you joining us. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big. <laughs>